everybody, and welcome to Committed Gaming. I am Flute 5311. And I'm Soul Slayer. And this is Let's Talk number three. Uh, I think we're going to try to do these weekly. It seems like we're able to kind of keep that schedule so far. So um, I think you can expect us to be a weekly installment here on our channel. Uh, so this week, we are going to talk about the Bungie update that just came out. And talk about a couple of things that were happening on our YouTube channel. Some conversations about the Nightfall. Uh, brief, brief hit on Iron Banner, and then I'm just going to let Soul Slayer tell us all about Battlefield Hardline. He's been grinding that thing out, and I'm excited to hear about it. Oh yeah, it's been an absolute blast. Like, it just, it, it's tough at times, but you know, it, it's well worth it. Well, I've been watching you stream on our Twitch stream, by the way, annotation on the screen, um, and it just looks crazy. But we'll we'll get to that here in a second. All right. Well. I guess we're going to start out with the 1.1.2. Uh, the They have now given us a brief insight to what the whole audio and visual thing is, what they uh, said in the last the last little update they gave us. They're going to allow you to adjust for certain types of colorblindness. Like there are, I think they listed three, maybe four types of colorblindness. And you can set it, and it'll automatically adjust for those like certain types of color blindness. It'll, it'll change all the shades of the colors, which will be really good for those people they, um, who, who need that. Yeah, and they also talked about with that that they had to figure out how to get it just right because it's like how do you, how can you tell what if it's arc damage, if it's void damage, if it's solar damage, if you can only see two colors. Right, so like as you mentioned here, when you're looking at you know shielded opponents like um, a shielded knight or a shielded uh, captain, you know what color shield is that, and do I have the right guns? They kind of mentioned how you know Bungie is meant to give you those quick, or uh, Destiny is designed to give you those quick color cues so you can make fast decisions. And if you don't have those cues, you can't make those quick decisions. And so they're just going to make it a much better experience for those people who are colorblind. Yeah, which I think is a fantastic thing that they're adding. And then um, they're also doing for the the audio, which we had talked about in our last Let's Talk, is what we thought it was going to be was they were going to give you a dial so that you can adjust the game audio and chat audio. Yeah, this, so they said that you could, uh, you'll could you be able to adjust the chat volume up to 125%, which would be pretty cool. Because um, I, 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 you know, I have my headset plugged into my Xbox One controller, and I pretty much have the game volume all the way down. And then I just I usually leave it on one click up, just so I can have it in the background, so I can get some of the cues. And it's still pretty loud, because I want to be able to hear the chat. I want to hear what everybody's saying, hear call-outs, and just... You know, Destiny right now is in a place where, you know, we're all kind of in-game users. So getting in and playing around with Destiny is more just about hanging out with our friends and just shooting some aliens. And so that's kind of where it is for me. And so I want to be able to just hang out and chat with people. So I think that'll be good. Uh, they said that the game audio will be able to go from a 0 to 100%. And then you can be able to mute the music altogether. Um, and, but however, they did mention... That there is going to be an audio Easter egg when the when the cute when the new thing drops out when the new update comes. So I'm really curious what kind of audio Easter egg they're going to throw in there. Yeah, I, I figure they're just going to give you a little voice clip of Master Chief telling you to get your uh, your act together. I'm hoping it's Christopher Walken, the <laughs> Hive. You've woken the Hive. <laughs> they're on the moon. So anyway, those are our hopes and dreams. They uh, they did, however, just to touch quickly back on the the visual cues that they did. They mentioned that um, they sp specifically Sepix when you kill him, Sepix Prime. You know, people were having a hard time finding that little bitty pyramid for your house seeds or your house banner or your ether seeds or house banner. And they mentioned that they're going to make those little loot pyramids. They they had another name for them, but they're going to make them bigger, about the same size as the. Um, as the common or the gray engrams. So they're going to make them a little bit bigger to find. Oh, wow. Those things are going to be massive. Yeah, because those things are really tiny. And usually I just have to run around the area where he died just to try to see if I can find it. It's somewhere over here. We shot him. And hopefully, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, at the very end, though, if you read all the way through the Bungie update, at the very end, they throw us a teaser that I, I think everybody's going to be very excited about. It's going to be interesting to see what the community um, takes from this. But it says that 
maybe we'll throw the doors open next week in referring to vault space. Which Flahoot is thinking that, hey, maybe next week we'll have larger vault space. Me being the pessimist, I'm thinking they're just <laughs> going to give us the, the vaguest, hey, we may, might give you this much more vault space in a, in a coming update, you know, just as vague as they can, you know, bunch of original. I'm really hoping that they're going to like, hey, here you go, kapow, and it's just going to be doors from heaven open, and we're going to be in there and be able to do everything. Um, but at the same time, right, I also can feel that they're just going to show us how it's going to look in the future. Right. And we're like, oh. So there could be that Debbie Downer there. But I am super hoping that it's going to be big vault space and that could finally, you know, have <laughs> just start getting rid of some, clearing up a little space because I am at mission critical, especially with uh, – Iron Banner going on and getting the new guns and just anytime you just adding one gun is a pain. Adding two, it's just like I have no space. Yeah. So we, that's the budgie update. Uh, we did have a comment this week on our Nightfall video. We do our weekly reset video um, every Tuesday morning, and we had a comment on there. Um, somebody mentioning that you know it's kind of lame that there's another another Nightfall that for those people who didn't pay for the DLC they can't play, they can't do. So they they're basically out this week. Which I didn't realize. Like, I thought they got, like, something separate. I didn't realize they were cut completely out of the Nightfall for that week. Yeah, so they're kind of... So, anyway, so, it, so it's kind of lame, right? You know, to have a complete... To have a, a pay-to-play system like that. Right. I mean, they're able to get the guns, right? It, it, or some of the stuff. They can't get the, the, the exotics, but they can get 330, or 31 armor. They can get 331 guns. But, I mean, they're completely cut out of the Nightfalls. Uh, so that's, that's a week of exotic drops that you lose or, or, or the rep or, there's, or the nine strange coins if you're doing the weekly. So uh, that's, 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 kind of a, that's kind of a pain for those guys. And I, and I don't know if there's a way around that, but um, I don't know. I mean, I guess it is. It's not entirely. It's not pay to play. It's pay to win, but it is for sure pay to play. But, I mean, you know, we did pay for the expansion to get that experience. Uh, I, I'm just thinking, you know, what could happen? So we're on Xbox One. What if the same thing happened with, you know, we don't get to play? Because, you know, the PlayStation, they have two strikes that we don't have. So I'm just trying to imagine, like, one week we roll around, and all of a sudden it's the, they, it's one of their exclusive mat, exclusive um, strikes, and we're like, well, now what do I do for the week? Right. It, the thing is, it's just I, I see it as we we originally bought the game before the dlc and we had every week to get all the stuff that we need to get and it still took forever to grind through and get the stuff that we have the, the stuff that we have now and i just feel like the people who bought the game later and uh, they just they're losing out on that experience that they every week get together with you guys and do it it's like okay wait let's check all right we don't we can't do it this week like i just i feel it's kind of lame the flip side, you get an off week. You do get an, <laughs> you do get an off week, yeah. And, 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 but so I don't think they can do Iron Banner either. Now that I'm you know, thinking about it, I think the Iron Banner has the little bitty symbol on it that requires the DLC. I'll have to check that out. I don't remember that offhand. But um, so anyway, we just wanted to kind of, you know, we had that comment on our, on our channel. We just wanted to kind of bring that back up. Um, and speaking of Iron Banner, uh, we're just going to touch briefly on this because we'll t- touch on this later. But man, Red Death and Fell Winter's Lives forever. Everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. I mean, like, all you hear is from a Red Death. And you can tell it's a Red Death, too. Well, because they they have that slower fire rate. Yeah. So I have not used my Red Death. I don't really, I don't know. I just don't like it. I bought it because I didn't have it, but I, I I don't like it that much. Um, but man, they are everywhere. I mean, I we we I was I was dropping into a match two nights ago, and I looked at the other team's roster just to see what they had for their loadout. Everybody except one guy, and he had a thorn. They all had red death, and then most of them had fell winter's lies or secondary. It was miserable. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's insane, and yeah, I agree. It's it's either red death or thorn. It's, yeah, it's never anything else. It, I, it is a rarity if you get killed by anything else besides those two. I mean, I'm using my vision to confluence, and I'm doing okay with that. Um, 
I'm using that in my secret handshake. But anyway, so we'll get into our Iron Banner experience later and kind of review on that on on how they did with Iron Banner six. But anyway, I just wanted to quickly touch on Red Deaths everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm really I'm going to turn this completely over to Soul Slayer here because I really want to hear about um, uh, Battlefield and how that's going down. All right. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to dabble in the story a little bit. I am not going to give anything away. No spoilers here. I'm just going to give my brief impression on how they did development wise. Uh, the story is not. I, I was expecting a very run and gun kind of thing at, at coming from Call of Duty, but it's it's it reminds me more of Splinter Cell Conviction, where you're you're hiding most of the time, you're sneaking around. Um, so just so people understand, it's not well you can you can charge in and mow everybody down, but then you miss out on a bit of it. Yeah, you mentioned it was kind of more like uh, some of the Tom Clancy style, uh, like. Splinter Cell, kind of a little bit more tactical. Yeah, it, it is. You, it's much more hide and take them out one at a time kind of thing than alert the entire group. Like, you can alert the entire group and hose them all down if you really want to, but there's just aspects that you lose in that. Um, which, it, it's, it's cool how they did it, I have to say. The relationships you have in the game is very complicated as well, though, in the storyline, which, again, not going to touch on it. It's just... Once you get your hands on the game and you play through the storyline, you'll realize what I mean when I say the relationships you have with people. It's just very complicated and tenuous. Uh, the, in the storyline, the weapons are actually very easy to get. Uh, it's one of those systems where you pick up the gun, it's now a, an available gun. You don't have to unlock that specific gun. You oh, only, that's nice. You only, get a few, you, only get, you only get a few guns that are like that, but you really don't need any of the other ones to get through the storyline. So you really don't have to like unlock anything. You just run through. If somebody had died, they have a better weapon than you. You can pick it up and, hey, it's unlocked, and you can use it in, on the rest of the story missions. Huh. That's cool. Uh, one cool thing is they have bonus objectives in the storyline as well. Uh, bonus objectives unlock things. In the, in the actual storyline to be able to be used. Um, which, again, with the, the stealth thing is the better option because then you can get those bonus objectives completed. How's the multiplayer going for you? I know you're grinding out that 300 knockout. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. See, the, the thing with the... the well, let me explain this first. The 300 knockout is the unlockable sniper rifle it, all the other ones you get enough cash you can buy it in the multiplayer the 300 knockout actually has uh challenges you have to complete to be able to unlock that specific gun now the challenges that you have to complete are painful and when i say painful i mean painful uh there this is the only gun i've ever seen in a game that has prerequisites for the prerequisites for the prerequisites huh. for the things you have to get done to get the gun. Huh. So more more painful than, than Thorn, huh? Without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> like Thorn hurt. Thorn Thorn hurt my soul when I got when I tried to get that gun. Because we were also like 24, 25 when we tried to get Thorn. <laughs> yeah, and it's like a 26 mission. Yeah, I, I remember that. That was so painful. <laughs> but no, it's just it's just this one specific thing you need these you need camera coins camera coins are given to you when you put down these little cameras around the map you only you only have two uh, when you spawn in place two down and then the thing is the the camera tags an enemy when it sees it which they have a decent amount of range but they have to stay in front of the camera for them to stay tagged um, and then a friendly has to kill him, not you. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's a mess. Yeah, it is a mess. No, but you need, you need an intel assist, and you need 10 of those to get a single camera coin. You need five camera coins to get through the first tier of prerequisites. Wow. I'm pretty sure you need 15 for the last one. 
I mean, I guess if you were working, you know, if you had a, a large group working together, you might be able to do that easier as opposed to doing solo like you are. Yeah, no, it just relying on random players is a bit difficult, especially when they have to die within such a small window. Um, and it's really hard to get around the map and place those when you're running with a team of 30-something against a team of 30-something. It's And that's what, see, that's what gets me. Is I, I, I've watched you play. I've watched our stream. I've watched you play. And it's like there's so much going on. I mean, there's so much to take in. I don't think I could handle that. I mean, I'm not that. I mean, I, <laughs> I just don't think I, I, I'm that twitchy. There's so much to try to absorb. I mean, you know, when I play Call of Duty, you know, I really, I really much like search and destroy. Um, it's four v four. You know, that that small tactics, I can, I can, I can work that through, and I can think that through, and figure out what things, how things are going to run. Having that many people, I just feel like I'm just going to be walking around getting clipped everywhere I go. Yeah, and that's kind of what happens with me a little bit, but uh, the luxury of being a sniper, I can go hide off in a corner and pick people off as they go around the corner. <laughs> well, then there's that. Yeah, but it, it's it's difficult having that many players in one map and trying to keep track of where everyone is because you uh, map control is a lot harder when you have that many players. Right. Oh, for sure. That's crazy. But uh, no, my favorite, uh, my favorite PvP uh, game type has to be hard uh, Hotwire. Hotwire is there are I think if I remember correctly five cars on the map that are select cars. You have to get in the cars and drive them. You have to get them up to a certain speed and maintain the speed. While you have them maintained at the speed, that car is considered captured, and you're now dwindling down your opponent's uh, points. Each, each team starts out with 500 points. And the longer you drive around those cars, the lower and lower their score goes. The first team to hit zero loses. Huh. That's kind of fun. I think I watched you do that one time when you were on a motorcycle. Yeah, there is one map where it's, it's a motorcycle. Uh, but the problem with that is, and I've been hearing this as complaints from a lot of people as well, is RPGs and explosives. They're too easy to get and use. If you play the game for a little bit, a little while, you can get enough cash to be able to do an upgrade on your starting vehicle. Now, this, th this is an RPG spawns in your trunk. So what happens with that is if you hop in the driver's seat of that specific type of car, like a, a, a muscle car or a, a sedan or whatever, uh, if you hop in the driver's seat, hop out, walk over to the back of the car, there's an RPG in the trunk. You can just do that with pretty much any car. So, uh, so you can just sit down in the middle of a road, wait for that enemy car to come by, and fire off rock RPG. Four people are now dead, and the car has been taken out. I'm thinking like Modern Warfare 2, one man army noob tubes, right? You can just switch your character class and get back, and all of a sudden you've got full noob tubes and you're ready to roll. Yeah, it, <laughs> that's no, kind of what crazy. it sounds like. Well, hopefully they'll get around to fixing that one way or another. Um, I, so I just wanted to kind of get a brief. Anything else you wanted to say on Hardline, or I think we'll, no. we'll probably let you do a another recap on that fully here. Yeah, no, I think I've gotten uh, everything for right now. I still have a few more things I have to figure out. And then later on, yeah, we'll probably do another video on uh, my impression of Hardline. Excellent. Well, I think that, that about wraps it up. Um, I'm just looking through here, looking through my notes. I'm not seeing much of anything else. So I think that's about it. I think um, so. Come on by. We're going to leave a link here. Uh, we're going to leave a couple annotations on the screen for our Twitch and our Twitter. Uh, the best way to figure out what's going on is going to be our, twi our Twitter. Um, you can see when we're going to go live and uh, what videos we've got coming out or what we're working on. So that's the best way to keep in contact with us. Um, yeah. Anything else? No, I think that I think that's everything. Uh, just come check out our YouTube videos. Uh, we have a lot of informational videos on Destiny, and soon we'll have a lot more on Hardline. For sure, for sure. And come hang out with us on Twitch. We're just hanging out. Um, usually one of us is playing and the other one's kind of hanging out in the chat. So, yeah, just come hang out. So I think that wraps up for our Let's Talk number three. Uh, I'm Flute5311. And I'm Soul Slayer. 
And you gamers out there, stay committed.